Good day, I'm Brian Farrell, and welcome to Pace IT's session on integrating data and systems with third parties. Today I'm going to talk about evaluating the risks of integration, and then I'm going to conclude with some considerations of integration of data. I have a fair amount of ground to cover, so let's go ahead and begin this session. Of course, I'm going to begin by talking about the need to evaluate the risks of integration. There are multiple reasons why systems and data may be integrated with third parties. The real key is to know the risks associated with that integration. Systems and data may be required to be integrated because of a joint venture with another entity, or when implementing a cloud computing solution, there will be a need to integrate systems and data. In some cases, the need for integration is well known and intentional, while in other cases, it may not even be recognized as happening. When people are using social media, they may actually be integrating company data with a third party. In all cases, there are risks associated with the integration of systems and data with third parties. Now let's discuss some of the considerations of integration. First up is risk awareness. Always evaluate the risks when thinking about integrating systems and data with a third party. So what are some of those risks? Well, the data may reside outside of the control of the business. The network transmissions may be vulnerable. The other side of the integration may not be as secure as your side. And finally, that third party may go out of business. What happens then? Those are some of the risks that you need to be aware of. The onboarding and offboarding of business partners is another consideration. Procedures and systems need to be put in place that will allow authorized people from the third party business partner to access the appropriate systems and data within your network. This is the onboarding process. Implementing an Identity and Access Management System, or IAM system, can help ease the burden. Procedures and systems also need to be put in place to remove access once the partnership is terminated or the authorized person leaves the business partner. This is the offboarding process. Then you need to consider the interoperability agreements. If the risks of integration are deemed acceptable, some additional agreements should be created to help the process along. There should be a memorandum of understanding. This is a document that is created that establishes an agreement between two parties. Another document that might be needed is a blanket purchase agreement. It's a document that is created and used to cover repetitive needs for products or services. There should be a service level agreement, or SLA. It's an agreement that specifies the guaranteed uptime of a system. And finally, there may be the need for an internet service agreement. This specifies any data limits placed on an internet connection and should also contain a guarantee of the amount of uptime of that internet connection. Another consideration of integration is data backups. Cloud storage of data backups may be the best solution to offsite storage for the backups, mitigating the risk of data loss in the case of a disaster because it won't be on your site. But there is a risk associated with this because that backup of your data is no longer in your possession. To mitigate this risk, all backups that are stored with a third party should be encrypted. Then there's data ownership. There needs to be a clear understanding of data ownership before the integration of systems and data is undertaken. Some third parties consider all data stored on their systems as being their data, no matter where that data originated from. Then there's compliance and performance standards. Read all agreements with third parties carefully to ensure that what they offer and or provide meets with the compliance and standards that are required. In some cases, it is not only inappropriate to integrate data with a third party, it may actually be in violation of the law. Always follow security policies and procedures. In all cases of systems and data integration, security policies and procedures should be in place to protect the integrity of the business's systems. 
at least one of the policies needs to define what is considered to be unauthorized sharing of data. And this moves us to a consideration of social media. Social media represents a type of data integration that may be difficult to control. With the increased use of social media networks and applications, company data may not necessarily be under the control of the proper entities. Companies should strive to train personnel on what is appropriate to share on social media and what should not be placed out in the open. It is possible for sensitive company information to be placed on the internet through the use of social media. That concludes this session on integrating data and systems with third parties. I began by talking about the need to evaluate the risks of integration, and then I concluded with some considerations of integration. On behalf of Pace IT, thank you for watching this session, and I hope to do another one soon.